camera. So congratulations everyone. You are now finishing or have finished materializing a concept. You took that weird thing your brain saw and made it so other people's brains see it too. So that's a, actually a hard thing to do. And congratulations. Nice job. You did it. So, for instance, a high authorship thing would be something that you can kind of just do whatever, 
and a low authorship thing is that you have to kind of make it fit as a puzzle piece into something that already exists, a framework. Uh, and then there's result. How many gaps can there be? Is it airtight? How functional does it have to be? Does it have to keep rainwater out? So the built environment, notably low authorship, uh, we kind of have to work with what exists in castles, especially castles, because they're historic. There are a lot of landmark castles. And so you can't just like add a slide onto the end of a castle that already exists. And it has to be a high level of result. You can't damage the castle itself or the people inside. Kind of challenging, um, but necessary. And illustration, on the other hand, is like high authorship and low result. You can draw anything that you want. I don't know if anyone told you this, but it's pretty great. It's kind of the best thing about drawing. Sure, but like again, it's just kind of gaps in the in the core. 
Uh, you see the uh, crenellated wall? That's a parapet with like gaps in it. And the crenellations are actually the gaps. They're not the parts that stick up. And um, there will be time for questions at the end. Uh, I hope. I pray. Um, then we have these oriel windows. They're just like bay windows that don't make it all the way around. Kind of a palace thing to do, actually, now that I'm like looking at it. And I'm like pointing on the sides. You can kind of see, like, oh, it's like a stop that anyone walks with another stone. Um, and then we kind of look at like whole, how the whole plan works. And you can kind of see what I was talking about with like, the 12th century thing and how it kind of changes over time. So the center is the um, Mott and Fifth. And key part of it, the Bailey is the lower ward um, over on the far side. And then you got the upper heap that is like, I would say, kind of a, a more recent addition. And it has more, again, Mormon style castle traits to it. <coughs> but all in all, pretty good sandler platter, right? We got the shrimpies, we got the heat on hummus. Pretty good guy. And that round castle in the middle, again, like, that's kind of the central part because it's the original part. And then we got, oh, this good, good chapel. So, St. George's ch that Chapel. I'm just going to talk about this for just a minute because it's a goodie. There are bonus slides related to this. It's a gothic castle that just landed here. It's pretty great. Um, has these flying buttresses. Again, very good. Then the fan balls, super great. One thing that I might not have time to get to is it has the Queen's Beasts on it, which are gargoyles. And I didn't know what the Queen's Beasts were before I found this out. But there are like 12, there used to be 16, I guess, just random animals that like different parts of England decided were the best, and now they're on a bunch of buildings. <laughs> so yeah, again, very good sample platter. You can kind of see where people got these ideas about how a castle should look based on this real good one. And it's not like the only one that has these good, good traits. It's just one that has pretty much all of them that has. And it's a goodie. Just a sweetie 10 out of 10. <laughs> so our best historical reference goes to Winterfell. Yeah. 
again, more impressive to a modern audience. And some of you might be thinking, oh no, my drawing didn't look like that at all. And you might have heard me say castles, which is the way pop culture recognizes them, which is a definitely stone home for royalty. And that's fine. That's fine. You might have just drawn a castle-shaped building, and that's good. Because there are some castles that are fairy tale castles that are real functioning castles. And you can notice they have less windows and not as, I would say, um, palace like. And so we see um, Alcaraz of Segovia, and this is, um, again, what architects would consider, yeah, 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 that's a pretty good fairy tale castle. And then we see this. <laughs> and we're like, oh, wait a second, that looks, looks like a cricket castle. So, Roy Schoenstein in Bavaria talked out in 1880. I don't know if anyone else is familiar, but that's about the time of the Eiffel Tower. They did build this with iron. Um, not really a castle, and architects call it kitsch, which is like the meanest thing we can say about it. <laughs> we don't know many curse words, but we know this one. And so what happens is, like, we go through this phase where we're like, we hate it. It's terrible. Why would you spend that much money doing something so silly? And then they went up in their ivory palace, and they were like, ah, yes, we'll, we'll make some more uh, scrolls about buildings that we love. And they completely, like, wiped this one off the face of their... their any kind of like canon that they teach academically, which is fine. But it was still a good, like this is like technically a gazankensberg because it's like from the inside out is one cohesive idea. And it's again just exuding this idea of like a fairy tale castle. Like we see all these really good things about it. So it's like the pure white stone and the very blue high contrast rooms. And everything kind of terraces back perfectly. The interior is insane. Um, so, King Ludwig did do a very good job with this, I think, but he did spend a lot, a lot of money just designing everything like a billion times, which is fun. Because it was about the spectacle. It was this idea of like, if you've ever played Civ, uh, changing from a, an idea of like a military victory to a cultural victory, and all of these castles started realizing after this one, like, wait a second, <laughs> this got a lot of tourists, that brought a lot of money in. And they're like, we weren't really doing a lot with our castles, we should probably start kind of switching around to this other side. And actually, those are prevalent now. And so, the architects are like, oh yes, we shouldn't even talk about these. Like, the whole rest of the world is talking about these, and only using this, like, these emojis. And they all kind of look the same, despite castles, notably, not looking at all the same. So let's look at the evolution of functional castles, because again, fortified people for royalty. And most building styles don't have to track three different tracks of how humans evolve over time. So they have to track for military, lifestyle, and distribution of wealth and power. And I don't know if you think back a little bit further than, I would say, the 1800s, but that kind of changed really rapidly. And a little bit of bad news about the evolution of that. But we'll, we'll start from the beginning. So we have the Celtic Castle, very beautiful. Unfortunately, thatched roof cottages, so... Well. <laughs> 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 but still had most, most Roman trigger, or like, kind of like troops that, that could just be nomads and destroy things out, so the civilians could be civilians, which is awesome. And then the Romans like, we got you. This is going to be way, way better. And so they built things out of stone, and like, th again, this is like 180. This is wild that they were including this. And they have like, really good things. So they have the cardinal directions. So the Via Principales and the uh, Via Decamana are like really big important parts of it. It's using kind of a cultural idea already at this point. And that was kind of what Rome's MO was. It was like, we're going to expand or expand our culture and then also gain culture back from this place we've expanded to. So it makes sense that they were pretty organized about this. Uh, because they were trying to, again, get their culture to be embodied in a local environment. It wasn't just defense, it was, again, about culture. And then we went through the Dark Ages, and we lost Concord and the arrow slits? I don't know how we lost those, but sorry, our babies. And so we go back, we try again, and the Mountain Valley Castle emerges, victoriously, out of the Dark Ages. And it takes about three months to build, so it's super good at expanding. Um, unfortunately, the community is kind of a mess, as far as, like, comparing it to that Roman club, which was very, very, very orderly. Kind of a mess. Uh, also made out of wood, so the problem is. <laughs> yeah, but, again, pretty, pretty good at the point of the which is very, 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 very good. Good job. So, we're getting better. Um, Norman Stone Castle in, like, 1050 AD, pretty good. And they have these, like, rectangular uh, towers in, engaged in the purple, which, uh, not the best, you can technically under, undermine an 
outside thing. So not the best, but still very good. And then this is like the cattle. This is like the best one. It's the middle-aged cow. The one that we kind of see pretty often. And it has a double one, which is really important to, again, keep the <coughs> keep safe. And if you make it past that rule, you still have to get through that rounded tower. And the rounded tower is, again, very good at not being undermined because it flares out at the bottom and doesn't have an outside player. You can have undermined this tower if there's no quarters. Great. Good, good call. And then we have like a gatehouse, so there's some directionality to it. They have some order to it. And there's all kinds of great things that we start to see emerge at this point. And the thing about a portcullis, it has to go somewhere. I did want to get this fact in. So <laughs> the gate is not a roll-up door. It's not a garage door. It does have to go vertically into something. Sometimes we make this mistake. It's fine. But this is kind of how they were really constructed. So like I was saying before, the, the idea of steel being used to make a castle kind of changes what the castle is. Because again, with a lot of these architectural features, Again, we're looking at something that works with corbeling, which is, again, a small hand-sized object, like a brick or a stone, is able to kind of extend its ability to reach out further and make an arch or a vault uh, because it is stepping. And if you don't have that requirement, you might make a different thing. And bad news about, again, there was this one thing that happened <laughs> in the 16th century that kind of changed things. And the fall of Constantinople was kind of that, that stopping point. It was the limit on when we realized we need to pass the for the best way to protect our royalty. And <laughs> I'm not saying it was a simple one, but the silica was able to uh, curl a 600 pound stone over a mile, which is different, you know? It's just different than what they had to do before. <laughs> and as a result, we had to, this is kind of the funniest part of it, uh, castle walls were not able to host basilicas uh, because it would destroy the castle they were defending. So we had to change the way the battlements worked by making them two to three times bigger, which is just a different way to build a castle. In fact, it was kind of not a way to build a castle. You can't actually do that and have the royal be happy, it turns out. So, castles kind of lose their raison d'etre, and it's, it's okay, but you just had to pick two at this point. Um, because again, your royal does not want to live in this kind of like hard to get into thing that isn't able to afford their lifestyle, which is fine because they made castle light buildings. And this is a beautiful chateau, which is the French word that derives from castellum, but it is not a castle. A chateau fort is the equivalent of a castle. Uh, so, similar word, not the same thing. And forts, star forts, again, those thicker battlements, real good for basilicas. Not so great for royals. But it doesn't stop castles. They, they keep trying. I'm very proud of that. So they think, like, Ooh, what if it doesn't have to work, work uh, per se? And that's why this city comes back. Because <laughs> it doesn't really work as a fortified structure, you know? It's not really fortified. The exterior wall is just as thick as any of the interior walls. I mean, that's not the best strategy. It just doesn't look like it's good. <laughs> And here we have <laughs> this idea of making McRibs for the masses. And turns out people love McRibs. They just love them. And it starts to change the way we collectively expect castles to work. And again, <laughs> architects are still like, mm, that's not how castles work. And then everyone's like, yeah, we 100% know how castles work. And architects are just like off on the side, like, oh, yes, we have our good, good way of thinking about it, and we're fine with this. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of uses collective consciousness in a, in a design forward way. So it's knowing how it worked in its original context, it's understanding what's different, and using that difference to make it better. And like, Ludwig got this. He was just like, 100%, this is how we do it. And so how do we kind of bottle that like? How do we say like, oh, how do we make a new, how do we make a new, 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 uh, it has to look big and safe. So, notably, that mott bailing part, the mott is a big part of why the keep was safe. It's like further away from the other structures, the other structures are potentially hazardous to it, so let's just put it near no other buildings. And as a result, it looks really big. No other buildings to compare it to. Gotta look busy. So, it had to like support a royal, and those people are picky. It had to have like a whole city. It was like a satellite. 
Satellite City for them. Like, I wish I could have a Satellite City. And it's gotta look good. It can't, it can't not be impressive. And so again, even Windsor, which is like architecturally what we love is castles, has these like really bold statements in the interior. Like super bold. Um, and that's where we get this like perfect storm of Neuschwanstein, which is like, yeah, this is what people imagine when they think of castle now. So the best in the grid award goes to Sleeping Beauty Castle. Like uh, roof lines, which again is a, a very good thing to do because 
roofline center this pitch shed snow very well, despite the picture. Um, <laughs> and it does a great job at, again, grounding you in something that isn't quite reality, but is noticeably a caricature of it. And all of the buildings are out of plumb, which again adds to the dynamism of that background. And then we see Diagon Alley, which I think is like the best transportation of like, this is something I saw in the environment, this is something I saw in Victoria Street, and I want to give it to you, I want to give you the feeling that I have. And they do, so they take elements and scale them up, and then again, use that, use that idea of putting them out of plumb, putting them out of normal to ground, and they're not perfectly vertical, and that hides portions of the scalar shape. And that's a really smart way to say make a thorough, uh, thoroughfare that like a bunch more people are using in Universal Studios and scale it up in a way that still makes it something fun. It still feels like I'm in this shopping area that's just something I happened upon. It's not. This is a fucking amusement. Sorry. This is a freaking amusement. <laughs> <laughs> and so it falls in the category of kitsch. I did lie about us not knowing this word. Sorry. <laughs>
so we see a scalar shift in kind of the places that are domestic versus the places that are kind of um, battle ready. And this is kind of a weird idea of that, like, how is struggling with the idea of the mind shaft and the zone shaft. So the mind shaft being like this rural understanding of how society should work. And the cell shop being like, society's moving, and you gotta kinda get there with it. And then we see him right in the middle, at the very end, we're granted this like, fantastic moment where House Castle actually improves in fidelity, it improves in like clarity, in a way that kind of makes it knowable. And the connections make a little bit more sense. So we see the house actually have like kicks that that anchor it into the main structure. And that's something we didn't see in the first iteration. So again, very smart way to use architecture in two different ways to describe or like personify a human, which is great. And like, again, architects love on buildings. And again, it's like our chance for character to supersede all practical implications. Again, not something we study often and we should study it more. And so architecture parlance, or speaking architecture, is when this was studied in 1778 by Boulet. And Boulet did a freaking great job. He made this good to the Senate afternoon. Perfect sphere. Not notable, but aspirational that, like, you know, society could understand the public's uh, things that were made. For them, you know, like, architecture is kind of for the people that occupy it, but unfortunately we just have a bunch of rich people making all the decisions. So it's, it's kind of trying to get away from that, but we didn't get very far, unfortunately. <laughs> Ledoux is like, oh yeah, we can do this, and he kind of contributes to that story. But again, it doesn't get very far until we start like really considering it. And this is where like we throw out the idea of kitsch. We use kitsch. And this is kind of where, where it gets a little bit here. So the Longenberger Basket Building <laughs> is when the architects tried to make something unbuildable buildable. So they made it basket-shaped building, and it actually works out pretty well as like an office building. The gap between the windows is about the size of a window in most offices. That's a good way to do it. And they use that as a design tree for making it more basket-like, which is a great. And I would say maybe one of my favorites of this typology. And it is a typology. We call them ducks and decorated sheds. And this, this idea came out of Las Vegas, of course. Um, so. Denise Scott Brown and Robert Venturi got a bunch of grad students, because free labor, um, all down to Las Vegas and said, let's categorize these weird, weird things that use 50% of their budget to make the building and reserve that last 50% to make it loud. And <laughs> I think Roman Mars did a really good job on his 99% invisible covering this. So if you are more interested in this, there's more content. And like, they're not the best architecture, I'd say, still a box, but Again, pretty good wrapper for that box, so we're very happy with it. And who doesn't love birds? <laughs> oh, no, this is not a good one. This is not a good one. Oh, no, we did make something cursed. <laughs> so you do run a little bit of a risk when you do try to take this on. Um, all of our adventure is risks, so that's fine, I guess, but uh, that one's not the best thing you can do. And then game designers came in, and they made a much better bird building. So this is a divine maze, I'm sorry about the color. Trust me, it's green on top because it's grass. So they did this great thing where they made it like <coughs> gameplay intuitive. Like, oh, we can talk, we can walk on the top of it, ish And there was like a green color, trust me. Um, and so they did a really good job. And they made a hollow. So the inside of it actually moves and changes. And they made our unbuildable buildings that we did a really bad job at and made them way better. And in fact, they even made a better duck. So the, <laughs> this horse stable is really good at explaining like, oh yeah, that's that's what was available to the common folk in the area. And it's a departure from the shrines. The shrines are just a solid carved, beautiful sculpture. And this is wood. This is an easy material to work. And so again, storytelling at the same time as, as providing a profile to navigate to. Again, very good, good building. So we realized that there is a way to resolve architecture parlance in a way that contributes, contributes to a story. And again, there's no papers on this. No one's writing papers on this. So that takes us to our most improved, Hyro Castle. So Hyro Castle starts as a very aspirational image. 
And so we see, yes, this is this is what a castle should look like. Looks like Alcaraz of Segovia. Good choice. And they just need something to kind of get all of their artists on the same page. So again, you're making a pixel abstraction of something and trying your best to make it cohesive. Again, very hard to do, but they do it. And it's pretty great. So they, they kind of take on European castles and they make it um, able to be a, a 3D cohesive concept in 2D kind of form. So you only have your two visions of it. And then they get the ability to use 3D and waste it. <laughs> so we have a bunch of these like wait for the pyramids on top of rectangles. For some reason, the left and right kind of lower like square towers don't have the same group, even though functionally having the same plan. I'm not sure why that is. And they had a different challenge, which was like you have to visualize it in the which is possible. Very good. Cool. <coughs> and then we see Smash memorialize this and make it more problematic. And so it has almost no architectural integrity of design because they made one of the roof pots from pointed to flat in order to make it a platform. Again, it is a better platform than it is a roof. And then we see in high res, they even elaborate more on that platform. They fail to articulate the way the roof meets the flat ground, which seems like an odd way to do it. But it's fine. It's all good. They don't have any kind of spire at the top of it. But again, fine. It's, it's all good. They just made something that was already problematic very much more problematic. And then was the Wind Waker that takes the most problematic part, which was those, those turrets that we maybe had too many of, and made it more. And now it barely fits. It doesn't really fit. And so, again, they're having to adapt to more constraints. And they get pretty far in front but it's a it's a pretty good castle, but it looks a little bit odd, I would say. And they have to make it recognizable from a variety of views, so I get that. That's a hard thing to do. Uh, but they did make it radially symmetrical, which is not often the case about the keep of the tower. You usually want one point of access, because otherwise everything else is a vulnerability. And it's got a lot of points of access, so <laughs> bad news about that. We don't see a lot of castles that look like this for a reason. So again, they're kind of working through it. They're like, okay, well, we're workshopping this. We got through part two. We're, we're here for this. And then they make this, this perfect, perfect version of a castle. And they do lop off one of the spires, but it's actually for the intent of making it seem almost sad that it's missing. And so we see a destroyed castle that is symmetric, symmetrical around like a central axis. And we see one side destroyed, and we see the other side still partially intact. And they even do that within uh, individual elements. And so we know what's missing, even though we haven't seen this version of the castle before. We know what's missing. And they also do this other thing with the landscape. They make it spiral. So it still is um, in the round, but it has kind of a progression. It has a circulation path that is not just everywhere goes in. And that's pretty great. And so we have something that, that kind of gives it a reason or an excuse to change as it radially kind of uh, concentrically goes into the center. And we have, again, a main axis. So like, it has directionality. And it ends up being pretty great. It does a great job at using the landscape to add to the uh, kind of majestic nature of it. It comes to a kind of major uh, like pinnacle point in the middle, which again, kind of correlates really well to the final boss battle that you'll be doing there, right under that spire. Again, very good at telling the story of it. Much better than this. And so just to recap, because actually it kind of tracks really well with the way I was taught architecture, consider what's been created. Because making something fit into a new context is 100% design. That's a great way to design. Um, so like what you want to do it the most. So lean on something familiar to help your focal point stand out. And then consider the freedoms granted by your medium specifically and use that. And then finally, what we learned from high roles, keep trying. <laughs> and that brings me to your classes. And 
it, it looks like we got some real good ones. And so we have the castle walls, very good. We have a keep with a flag, which is very good. Again, the flag does indicate like what where this kind of is playmate is land. Flags are very important. We got a sun that does not have sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> and an arrow, so like this is mid flight, which is very good. Ooh. Okay, so we have this one that indicates a person is inside with a shield. Very, also very good. Indicates this is occupied. Um, classic, classic trick. Um, very good. Four corners. Very strong. Ooh. What's SBC? Oh, those are initials. Nope. <laughs> um, drawbridge. Very good. Port colors with enough space to go up. Very good. <laughs> Castle alligators. <laughs> That's a strong contender. <laughs> yeah, because it actually has a moat with an alligator in it. Highwater, a moat, totally an alligator. Oh, shoot, this is hard, this is hard. I am going to give it to Castle Alligators, though. <laughs> Sorry. Castle Alligators is the winner of this. Okay. 
another part of the question. <laughs> Sometimes heard that architects and engineers are at odds with each other. That the, the architects want to put features onto the building. Um, but it seems like the architects care. Uh, architects care a lot about function and being able to be built too. Yeah. Um, architects are more of a technical architect because it's easier to explain why a design chain and have numbers associated with it. Um, so typically, I I use the engineers to kind of learn like what should be the the first iteration, uh, and then if there's a way to push it, then you know that's when you have a dialogue. But usually, they're not as adversarial as you would think. Um, it's kind of a teaching relationship, kind of thing. Yeah. Is there a good like Neil deGrasse Tyson of architecture for complaining about bad castles in movies? Chativersity. Oh. YouTuber. Shadowversity? So Shad on YouTube. His channel is Shadowversity, S H A D diversity. Um, and yeah, he has a lot of videos that are here is this fantasy castle, and I am going to rage about it for the next 30 minutes. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's like it's like a Thank you. 